So as you guys know, I spend quite a lot of time building in Terraria. I've got over, I think, 250 videos with different builds. I stream it and I like to just kind of play around in Terraria builds just generally. But a lot of you guys have been asking, how do I take something like this and then turn it into something like this? Well, don't worry, guys, because I'm going to cover exactly how you can do this as well, because this is my video on top building tips in Terraria. Hey Terraria fans, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Normally I'd say, hey, we're doing a speed build, but today is a little bit different. As the title implies, I'm gonna be taking you through my top building tips for Terraria, and that means a lot of little things that you probably already know, but don't really know how to actually do. So this is kind of a video for anyone that's relatively experienced and certainly for anyone that is new, and hopefully these will give you a bit more insight into, well, some of the things that I do to make some, well, hopefully rather interesting creations. Now that said, I'm not the end all be all when it comes to building tips in Terraria, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but these are some really straightforward tips and some, well, I guess demonstrations of how they work. And hopefully this will be something you can apply in your future builds to really help spark that imagination and also, well, improve the, I guess, overall final appearance of any build that you do make. Now, of course, before we hop into these awesome building tips, guys, do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and of course, share this with any friends or, I guess, family that you think might enjoy this. We're trying to grow the channel, and I really do appreciate it. Right, with that said, guys, let's jump into those tips. All right, so here we are. This is going to be a very familiar build for you guys. This is kind of the standard design that you're going to see, the box house. Now, we don't necessarily hate this thing, but we could do a whole lot better. And obviously, this wouldn't be much of a building guy if we didn't actually show you how to improve on this. And to do this, guys, the first thing I'm going to jump into is our first tip, and that is to build with asymmetry, meaning don't just build a box, build a couple boxes. Now, the most easy way to do this, of course, is just to simply make another box somewhere off to the side. Now, I don't mean right beside but we're going to basically make something, let's say right here, maybe we'll make it a little bit taller and maybe we'll kind of shift this over here. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of connect this down to the ground. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a design here. Who knows what this is? And if you don't like something like this, we can of course flatten that out. We can get rid of this, but basically we're going to make an additional box that then connects to the ground here. And we're simply going to fill it in. Now, again, guys, this doesn't look like much, but the reason we want to build with asymmetry is exactly for the reason that it's not going to look very blocky. This is one of the biggest challenge I think a lot of people have is they tend to just build well in the same pattern. So you're going to see a lot of the same designs and they don't look all that good. Now, one thing is that this is obviously interrupting the build, but we have a choice here. We could delete this section right here and right here and open this up or we could actually bring this all the way across and maybe use this as another floor and I kind of like that idea so we're gonna just build this across right so get rid of this door fill this wall and maybe we'll just shift the door slightly over and we'll carry this down across on the floor and maybe we'll shift this to uh, you know what let's say right over here now I know it looks a little strange right now but this is sort of the basic idea what we really want in our builds guys is to have have a bit of variety, have a bit of a different look, and already the build's looking a little bit, well, different, and obviously we can also fit additional NPCs. So again, building with asymmetry is going to give you a different feel to the design. What you really want to do here is try to make various sized boxes at different heights, different positions, and you'll end up with something a little bit different that can be very interesting as a final product. Now, of course, this is a slight step up from the simple box house that we started with, but it's missing a couple of different things. And that brings me to my next tip, thickness. And no, I'm not talking about the meme of thickness. I'm just meaning like the actual foundations and the wall thickness. This is another thing that people really struggle with. When you make a wall that is a single block wide, it doesn't look sturdy, it doesn't look stable, it's got no foundation, and worst of all, it, well, kind of feels like flimsy. Now you could use some wood and double up on this, but quite frankly, this doesn't look very good. It, it's not horrible, but I really like to use wood as kind of the interior wall, and I like to use something like stone on the exterior. So I'm gonna grab some gray brick, and I'm just gonna replace this section. And again, this is not perfect. We're actually gonna make an opening right here. And as you can see, just by doing this, we're gonna get a little bit more thickness to the build, 
a little bit more width. And even on the inside, I do like to kind of double up on these as a main structural part. And just that alone, in my opinion, is a really good step in the right direction. It doesn't look too big, it's not too flat, and it's also not so flimsy. But part of thickness isn't just on the walls, guys. We also have to deal with the foundation. Now, you could definitely use gray brick here as well. I think it looks good if you have it just directly underneath. You could do a false foundation, guys, as well, where you would dig all of this out. But one thing to do with foundation, in my opinion, is make sure that it's a little bit thicker. You can go three down, you can go four down. It's really up to you. I also like to not have it be all perfectly symmetrical and shaped. Again, we're keeping that asymmetry here. And another way to enhance this is to also use a variety of blocks. So any stone or anything like that will work well. So let's grab some stone and I'll show you exactly what I mean. It's really just as simple as putting in a couple of random spots. You're gonna to start to see a little bit of a pattern here, but you're gonna get this idea that basically what we're doing is breaking up the design and giving us something a bit more interesting to look at. Now, of course, you could also do this here in the wall if you like, but for now, we're gonna keep it very simple. But as you can see, this idea of adding some thickness and some depth is really, really important. Now, my next tip is also related slightly to the first around asymmetry, and that is to use your hammer. I can't tell you how often people build something and it's very flat and not very interesting. Part of Terraria building that's gonna really separate people that are a little bit more nuanced in their building and maybe look a little more skilled is gonna be that they use their hammer frequently. And all we wanna do in a build like this, guys, is use the hammer in a couple of spots to give it a little bit of a different feel. And it can be very subtle. You don't need to do anything big. So if I add a couple extra pieces here, make that a little bit thicker, all I have to do is actually hammer this in and we've kind of got a support pillar in the middle of the room. The other thing that this does is it kind of curves this room for us so it actually might be smart to put another piece here let's say we thicken this wall as well and then we're gonna do the exact same thing and all of a sudden this room has a completely different shape than what we have up here so you're kind of combining the asymmetry and the thickness designs together to make something kind of interesting you can also do this on the outside of the build and it looks rather interesting as well a couple hammer strikes here and there is all you need and we can kind of make this look a lot more interesting now you could thicken the walls a little more you can change how you do this, but simply using the hammer for a couple of supports, that kind of thing is really, really valuable in my opinion. Now we've definitely added some thickness to our foundation and to our walls, and we have a little bit of asymmetry going and it's looking pretty good. But one thing that you're definitely gonna notice stands out is this is kind of boring in terms of the variety of the blocks we're gonna use. And that brings me to my fourth tip, which is use variety, guys. Use a variety of blocks and a variety of walls. Now you can do this in a variety of ways, but personally, I like to use something for the floor and something for the ceiling that go horizontal, as well as a couple random support vertical type beams in the middle that are also made out of wall. Of course, you could use block and actuate them, but generally I like to stick with walls because it's a little bit simpler and a little bit cleaner. So to add this variety, guys, I'm gonna grab a couple of different walls. And in this case, we're gonna go with our purple rain wallpaper. And we're gonna use this as the actual floorboard. Now, I know this looks probably a little bit crazy at first sight, but don't worry, we will cover this in a second. So let's use this as our floorboards. And I think for the roof, let's go with something a little bit different. Maybe we'll go with some mahogany wall. I kind of do like this one usually for the ceilings. Maybe we'll see how this looks in the end. And I think you can always change this, guys. This is part of using variety. Just kind of use whatever you think is gonna look good for your design. So right now, um, yeah, the purple and this really stand out, but we'll get to that in a second. What we're looking to do now is add some vertical pieces. Now you could use fences, this is totally fine. However, it lets a lot of light in and I don't necessarily like the way it always looks. So I'm gonna go with something that I like to use often. And in my case, that's gonna be some ebon wood, which has a nice vertical grain to it. This is really important in my opinion. You wanna figure out if they're gonna go all the way through like this or just stay in between the actual walls, kind of like a bracket. In this case, I kind of like this design, so I think we're gonna stick with this one. And we're gonna maybe do, well, just two in here, none in here, and let's do, let's say, like maybe one or two, maybe even three up top. It doesn't really matter. Ideally, they're gonna be about the same distance apart, but it's kind of a nice way to just add a little bit of detail. So as you can see, guys, this looks a little bit weird right now. It's kind of missing something, and you probably already know what it is, and that, of course, is paint. This is one I typically see beginner builders struggling with is they tend to build all with one color palette or they don't actually use paint to change anything. And that is a big mistake in my opinion. So with a design like this, we're obviously already using a 
lot of brown and gray, and I kind of want to stick with that palette. Of course, you can use any colors you want, guys, but just make sure that you use paints and that you use them kind of consistently throughout your build, because that is really going to help make this look a heck of a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some paints. I think, like I said, we're going to stick with the brown. We're going to stick with the gray, at least for now, and we can always change this later. This is very easy to change, but I think for now, let's just go with our brown paint and see how we like this. Now, nothing's perfect here, guys, of course. We can change some of the differences in the walls, that kind of thing, but I think we'll probably stay with this, and let's go with the mahogany top section. Let's just get this nice and brown, and now you can see this starts to blend quite nicely. The benefit of this blending, guys, is it doesn't stand out as much, and of course, this starts to look a heck of a lot better when it comes to the actual design. Now, as you can see, just that alone feels a lot cleaner, so I'm going to probably do the same maybe down here, but let's switch it up with some gray. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think the beams here are the only thing I want to see if I want gray or maybe if I want them brown. I think brown is just, it's blending a little bit too much for my liking. So maybe we'll go back and we'll swap it to a gray here. And uh, that's not bad either. And I think we could maybe change this. So I think maybe white's going to be the way we go. It's probably going to stand out a lot more than I like because obviously each wall and each block take paint differently. And this is why you do need to play around with these a little bit. But we can see if we like something a little bit more like this. I think this is not bad. It looks like a very small tiled pattern on, you'd see on a floor somewhere. And maybe right here we'll do the same and go with white. And uh, yeah, I don't hate this, but I could do a little bit more if I wanted to, maybe to change the shape up on a build like over here. And the first thing that comes to mind is, even though this is a little bit different, I do want to use my hammer again. I think the best way to do that for this build is actually to add some wood and just let's make a little bit of a niche kind of support structure here and see if this will look decent. Now, this doesn't look like much initially, but once we do this, we're gonna go ahead and just make that look like a support. And as you can see, you know what? This should probably move over one. We can also use our actuators here to well push this to the background and well make it look a little bit more uh, compliant with the build. And also it won't get in our way, which is always a you know kind of a bonus. So this isn't too bad. I like that it looks a little bit different. I think we're gonna stick with that for now. So to summarize so far, guys, we've built with asymmetry, we've used our hammer, we've added some thickness in certain areas in the foundation as well as the walls, and we've actually used some paint to make our build look relatively cohesive. And while this actually looks pretty good as is and might be a step up for a lot of people, there is definitely something missing. And that's going to bring me to my fifth tip, which is roofing. Now, as you guys know, I am a bit of a sucker for roofing. I do tend to struggle with it. I've actually made a tutorial, guys, on five top tips for roofing, which you can check out up here in the video. I'll link it in the description as well. But basically, roofing is going to add a tremendous amount of detail to your design and is well worth the extra effort to do it. That said, not every roof is made equal. And and I think sometimes people just kind of ignore them altogether. And I think it's a huge mistake if you're trying to make your build look a little bit more interesting. Now, of course, when it comes to roofs, there are a ton of different designs. And again, I did cover that in a previous video, but basically you got to do something that you think fits or that you can replicate easily. Now, in my case, there isn't a particular design I have in my head. I'm just building as I'm talking here, but I think I'm going to go with a design that's a little bit different. I'm going to use myself some fence. We're going to paint this, let's say brown. And then we're just going to add this as the initial point where the roof connects. And then we'll just add a layer over top. And I think this is going to look pretty good considering because we're not really doing anything all of that special. But you're going to notice something. This looks a little bit weird. We have two of the exact same materials going across and it just kind of looks well blended. And I don't really necessarily like that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to switch this design or at least the material to something different. Maybe we'll grab ourselves some pearl wood. We're going to paint that brown. And let's see if that looks any better. And yeah, like as you can see, using a different block does look a little bit different. And this is going to establish a foundation for our roof, which probably should overhang our actual design here slightly. And then we're going to see a little bit about how we want to actually make the rest of the roof. Now, again, you don't need anything too fancy, but I do highly, highly recommend that you use a dynasty shingles. Now there's two kinds. There's the blue and there is the red. A lot of people ask me about these two materials in a lot of my videos about how I do the roofing. I use shingles in like 95% of my roofing builds. You can use pretty much anything. You could use stone or wood, but I'm a big fan of the shingles and that's just a personal preference. But if you've never used these before, definitely give them a shot. So my design here, guys, is going to be pretty simple. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I could just do a big triangular roof here, but I think we're going to go with something that has a little bit of an overhang because I just think that's going to look kind of interesting. It could be a short roof. It doesn't have to be too big, but I think something maybe like this. 
come across and just see what we like here. And again, if it's not perfect, we can always add to it. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I've already screwed this up, so let's go ahead and not do that. Let's go up, up, over, and there we go. Okay, so this is all we need right there. And as you can see, it's not too crazy. It's thin, it's small, but it does look pretty good. And if we wanna add some more detail, some more features, we can always do that. But again, for the sake of simplicity, guys, I don't wanna spend a ton of time on this. Maybe we'll add every alternating or every two blocks, let's say. Now, again, you don't need to do this. Your roof can be really, really straightforward, but I do like the way these look. And this is just a design that I'm kind of inventing as I go. And you certainly do not have to do this by any means, guys, just, Build whatever you like, but please add a roof, guys. It's going to add a ton of amazing feature and detail to your build. It's gonna just make it look finished. And then here, maybe we're gonna add, a, let's let's do a block all the way across, and maybe we'll hammer this down and make this look kind of finished. And a good way to do this, in my opinion, guys, is we just kind of wanna, you know, hammer this everywhere or anywhere. It um, doesn't have to be on every block, but something like this will look kind of interesting. There's no real rhyme or reason. We're just kind of putting this together. I don't know about you guys, but from a paint perspective, I think I want something a little bit more colorful. It doesn't have to be too vibrant necessarily, but maybe something in the kind of red range or maybe like even the deep teal. Let's go with that. I do like a good deep teal on my roof. It's got a nice kind of interesting color to it, and it looks pretty good across both the shingles as they tend to take the color fairly well. So again, guys, adding that color, keeping it consistent in your roofing, I think is really good. Again, you can add a lot more detail to this roof should you like. You can kind of do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, I think something like this now all of a sudden looks pretty interesting. Now, you'll notice we're letting a lot of light through here. We could easily, and I mean very easily, put a wall there, and we could just do that right now. And we'll go with like a gray, let's say, or actually let's go with the actual paint color that we have. It is deep teal after all. So we'll let that kind of darken this up. And then we have a kind of a cool design. Now, another thing to look at here is we could extend this. Again, this is where you gotta kind of experiment with thickness and these other things. So maybe we're gonna go like this, pull that up a bit, use our hammer again and make it look like it's supported. And yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. And no, I didn't miss that spot. I, I, I left this on purpose. So with the roofing done, you can see this is really starting to come together nicely, but we're definitely missing a couple of things. And that's really gonna be right down here where we have this tiny solo chair and table. Uh, it's a little bit boring. It's not very exciting. We need to add some decorations, guys. Basically what you wanna do is just add a little bit more detail to the build by either adding more chairs and tables and little things here and there. And so we're gonna do that in our next tip, which is gonna be, well, how to decorate properly. Now, when we're talking decorations, I like to use things like books and any kind of glass jars or bowls, that kind of thing. So you can really grab whatever you like. I'm a big fan of the Dynasty Bowls personally. Uh, we also have some of the bottles we can use. These are really great, simple decorations. They add a pop of color. You can kind of put them anywhere and they just kind of generally look, well, a little bit more interesting. But it's not just about decorations like that. There's also things like furniture and using glass to make things a little bit more interesting. Another big part of a decoration similar to the roof is gonna be structural things like stairs, which we'll also add to this design. But basically we're looking for things that make the build stand out a little bit more. So when we're talking more about the architectural design elements that add what I like to think as decorations, like say like a roof, uh, I'm gonna look at stairs. And I do have a tutorial guys on stairs. You guys can check that out. I'll link it as well down below. But really what we're gonna do is add ourselves a little spiral staircase that should kind of look a little bit more interesting and add some detail and interest to our design. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and break some of this up, add this somewhere, anywhere really, it doesn't quite matter. And then we're gonna go ahead and just make ourselves some of this design. And the spiral staircase, guys, doesn't have to be perfect. We're in a very small space here, so we're just gonna add a couple of little steps and just try to make this look, well, sort of like a design. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> It'll look like that, but it's not that hard to do. Again, you're gonna look for something that just makes sense for the design and for the actual look and feel of the build. This is where you don't wanna go too big or too crazy. This'll do just fine. Another thing I like to do with these is actually add a background wall that's a little bit different. So let's find a wall that we like. I think something that's maybe a bit more a brick or even a bamboo could look interesting. Uh, we could also use Ebonstone, which I'm a fan of. So let's go with that. We'll paint that white and see what this looks like and if we like it. And I think it should look pretty good. It's not gonna be perfect, of course, but you know, something like this is pretty much all we need. And there you go, we've got this kind of pseudo looking, well, it kind of works. It's a spiral staircase. Again, we're working in a small space, guys, it's a tutorial, but you kind of get the idea. This adds a little feature and a little detail to our design. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and keep that. Now, uh, I think we could also maybe think about, uh, let's, let's, let's maybe make this gray, just give it a little bit of a different look. 
And yeah, that's not so bad. I think we got our little staircase going, uh, we've got our roof, and now we can focus on some of the other decorations. And another structural thing I like to do for this is actually to add some glass, and specifically some glass wall for some windows. Now, there's a lot of ways to make windows, guys. It's probably another tutorial I'll have to do. But basically, now that we've got these vertical pieces. I like to just kind of throw these in in different places. You can make them really big. You can separate them. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm going to go up here and maybe make more vertical like windows. Maybe we'll just do something like this. Um, and yeah, you can really experiment a ton. I do like to also make some designs over here uh, where we actually put the window through the walls. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So what we'll do is we'll actually break this up right here. And I'm going to actually add some glass uh, right to this. So let's grab ourselves some glass get the actual blocks, and then we're just gonna kind of experiment with this. And of course you can do anything, you can make this as big as you want or as small as you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're also gonna add a curve there. So as you can see, it's not looking too bad. This helps a lot in my opinion. You could thicken these ones up if you want them to be a bit bigger. I want them to be symmetrical and in the actual middle, but you know, we could, we could switch this up should we choose. Let's, let me go like this go toward the outside. That's not so bad. And again, this is just small things, but now the house is looking a little bit more interesting, a little bit more detailed, and it's starting to really come together. Now, does that mean it's finished? Not necessarily. We can do a lot of different things like adding a fence or adding little textures and details here and there. But in general, when it comes to your decorations, there's different kinds. And one of them is going to be things that are structural, like, like I said, your roof, your stairs, your windows, that kind of thing. And then there's going to be these small little details, which we're going to keep adding now. Again, we're going to add a little bit more here and there, and I'll just kind of speed through this here, and you guys will see what the final product looks like. Okay, so we've sped through those decorations, guys. I'm not gonna touch on everything, but as you can see, there's a couple of little things that we did to add a lot of pop of interest. Again, you can kind of pick here what you like or what you don't like, but basically when I'm outside, I like to have some greenery, so some flowers of some kind, maybe a bench to sit on, that kind of thing. On the inside, especially in bedrooms, I tend to like to make these little sort of window details, which is basically just, you get a platform, you hammer it down, and you can attach some banners and paint those any color that you like. Uh, and then of course, we're gonna add a couple of things here, like for some storage, and our little kitchen area with a tiny bit of seating is pretty sparse, but pretty easy. And we've added some lights, some candles, that kind of thing. Now, again, if you have any questions about the decorations, guys, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But in general, as you can see, adding all that decoration looks a lot better when you're looking at the build in totality. And for a lot of people, this is gonna be a really, really great house to have in their world. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with it as well. But again, there's always something we can do to make it a little bit better. And that brings me to my next tip, which is going to be landscaping. Now, this is something that I didn't really do a lot of in my earlier builds, and it really, really shows. When you look at some of the builds I used to do back in the day compared to where I am now, spending a little bit of time on landscaping makes a huge difference, and I'm going to show you some really basic ways to do that. And again, guys, you don't really need to go crazy here, but a little bit goes a long way. Now, for landscaping, guys, there are a couple of things that I recommend, and the first is going to be to add some bushes, some shrubs, and some trees. That's really the basics and again if you want actually to make a custom tree guys or want to see some trees in more detail more design i do have a tree tutorial as well that's already up on the channel so go check that out i think i'll link it in the description below or you'll see a little card pop up here but basically trees can add a ton of detail and we're going to go ahead and make some very basic ones using some acorns and uh, just planting them in various spots so we'll find some places where we want some trees again they don't need to be perfectly spaced but something like this is fine for our purposes we're gonna add a few on this side as well. And so we're gonna get different heights here, but the idea is simply to have a variety of trees just like this to add some detail to the build. It's not gonna be perfect. A custom tree will look a little bit better, but that's okay. So already this is looking a lot better just with some basic trees. The next thing I'm gonna recommend that you do, and again, keep it simple, is to grab yourself some wall, living leaf wall, and we're gonna go ahead and throw this down in some random spots. Now, you just wanna make this look a little bit like shrubs. It doesn't have to be all connected, but just some spots to add some green, just like this, random, is good that's totally fine and then we're going to do the same on this side 
adding some maybe some bigger ones here like more like almost like a hedge if you want and we're gonna go ahead and kind of keep this simple so there you go that's pretty good i'm liking that now this alone is a really 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 good place to be i think this makes it look a little bit more interesting it's not perfect you can even add some fences and some walls here if you wanted to to add a little bit more texture and detail I'm not going to get into that because we're focusing on landscaping but the landscaping goes beyond just plants guys one thing that i like to do is going to be to actually go back grab some stone, just the basic stone block, and actually add this underneath. Now, a lot of people don't think about this, and it's something I've been doing in a lot of my builds, but it's just gonna break up our build a little bit more, make it a little bit more interesting, and just randomly putting it in chunks is going to make a lot of a difference. Now, you don't have to go crazy with this. You can kind of just randomly move your mouse around, or I guess if you're on console, move your cursor around, whatever it is, just finding places where this can fit, and it's not gonna look great initially, but once you've added enough of it, it actually doesn't look too bad. Now we've got some clay under here, which I don't like just because it separates the build a bit. So there we go. And then, yeah, that's pretty much all it's going to be. So as you can see, that's already looking a little bit more interesting. So the final touch that I like to do generally is going to be to grab myself some green paint. Uh, we're going to then add some strange plants. Now I do appreciate that not everyone's going to have access to strange plants because I am in journey mode. Obviously it's a lot easier for a tutorial, but in general, the idea is you're going to add a variety of plants just to make this stand out. I generally use the purple and this green one. I don't know why, they're just my favorite. They kind of look better in my opinion. And just doing this works. If you don't have access to strange plants, guys, I do recommend the rubble maker because you can collect seeds pretty easily. Jungle seeds and grass seeds will give you a more interesting effect. Uh, I'm not gonna do that here, but you can basically use this, grab some seeds and throw them down and that'll look pretty good as well. Um, so I'm going to stick with the strange plants for now. The other thing you can do is collect blueberries, that kind of thing. And that will also look pretty good. Um, and yeah, you just pick whatever you like, but adding this foliage, adding a bit of greenery, in my opinion, does wonders for the build. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're looking for, well, some plant life and some weirdness. And that is a really good step up. I think now that we've got some landscaping done, now that we've got some plants in, some trees, this is starting to feel a little bit more like a house. And again, this is really what it comes down to, guys. These sort of tips are basic, but when you apply them in a very meaningful way and you experiment a little bit around how you're using things, that's gonna end up with a better product at the end of the day than what you might have originally thought possible. And just to prove my point, guys, I didn't plan any of this out. I'm literally building and talking as I go, and there's no real rhyme or reason to the design. But this is one of those things that I think is really important to come back to, which is you have to experiment. And this is really kind of my final broad based tip here is that you really just want to play around with different blocks, different elements and different designs. And really to highlight this example, any of the things that I've used here, I could easily see myself using ebon stone or a different block for the stone work for the wood here. If I really wanted to, I could actually replace this really easily with a host of different materials. I could play around with things. I know that there's a lot of different woods that would work and it doesn't have to be perfect, but certainly I can try something. So if I use pearl wood up here and it's a little bit too dark, maybe I'm gonna go with some ash wood or maybe I'll use, I don't know, some palm wood and get some different designs and just see what this looks like if I painted brown and add it into the actual design so right here i'm like you know what i kind of like this as the floor let's use this as a floor section for here and for here and then just kind of play around with it it doesn't need to be perfect we could also intermittently kind of break this up with different pieces and just kind of like play around with the design so if i don't like something i can i could switch it entirely like so uh you know maybe this isn't my favorite yeah maybe we're gonna get back to this and we'll stick with palm wood instead again there's a lot of ways you can do this and this is sort of the point like there isn't a right or wrong way when it comes to building you can always change things at any point and that is the beauty of the experimentation when it comes to terraria so don't be afraid to kind of mix things up change up the design a little bit and play around with how things look if you're not happy with something change the paint change the material change the type it doesn't really matter it's really up to you and i think ultimately what you're going to find is that you're going to have a really interesting final product that you should be able to learn a little bit about how to make something similar or pull something from that in your future builds and that's really the whole point if you don't like anything just change it just play with it and who knows you might end up with something really interesting or a really cool design that you're going to carry forward in a lot of different builds
Now, of course, with all that said, guys, these tips are literally just meant to be a baseline starting point for you to play around with if you haven't thought of these things already. Hopefully, by also demonstrating them, you're kind of going to get a little bit of a better sense of what I mean and how to actually implement any of these designs. Of course, you don't have to do any of this. You may do some of these already, or you may even have a better way of doing them. And if you do, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, guys, with that said, I hope that that really helps you understand a little bit more about some of the ways you can build in Terraria. I know these are nine tips that you could really probably boil down to maybe like five or six, but the idea is you really want to get out there and work on some of the basics if you're looking to make your builds a little bit more interesting or diverse. And again, for a really quick recap of those tips, we're talking about asymmetry, which means just don't build a box. If you're going to build a box, try to build a different shape box or maybe box on top of a box on an angle or whatever. Don't build symmetrically everywhere because it's not going to look that good. That asymmetry really lends itself to having a bit more of a realistic shape to things. Not to say that's what you have to do because it is Terraria and you can kind of do whatever you want. But in general, if you're looking for that shape and that feel, that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. Second tip is to build with some thickness and make sure that you build that thickness in certain sections. You don't have to do it everywhere, but particularly on the foundation or the bottom levels of builds, it's going to go a long way in making the build look a little bit more believable and feel a little bit more, well, sturdy. Third thing is use your hammer. It's really, really useful. It's going to do a ton of work for you. I know it's a lot of extra clicks, but let's be honest, guys, having those angles and creating some of those shapes and designs is really what's going to help you make the builds look a lot better. And it's just something that just brings a lot of life to any design. Fourth thing was variety, guys. Don't use the same blocks across the entire build. It's okay to kind of keep themes throughout the design or the house, but definitely don't stick with just one or two types of blocks or walls. It's going to look very flat and very boring, so definitely mix those up. The fifth thing was use paint. Paint is going to make your builds look a lot better. Obviously, the color is nice, but also you can blend certain things together to make them look more cohesive. Now, of course, not everything blends, but you'll have to figure that out for yourself. Sixth was roofing, and roofing adds a ton to a build, guys. Do not skip it. I know it's frustrating sometimes. I am not the best roof builder out there. Of course, again, you can check out some of my tutorials around roofing or trees or all that kind of stuff, but basically add it and you will not be disappointed. Seventh was interior design or decorating. It's something that's pretty easy to do. You can kind of do whatever. Just try to theme your rooms as a bedroom or a kitchen or a bathroom or whatever, and that'll really help you determine what goes into that room. It's a little trick I like to use, but basically don't forget to decorate. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's uh, something that's gonna add a lot of those little details that really stand out. Number eight was landscaping. Again, keep it simple, but do not forget to do this. It will add a ton of depth to your build. I cannot stress this enough. The biggest difference I've found between some of my old builds and some of my newer builds isn't just the fact that I've gotten better as a builder or gotten more familiar with the designs and blocks. It's literally that I've started spending more time on landscaping and it goes a very long way. It's really going to be something that fundamentally changes the way that you view builds. And finally, I just mentioned, but experimentation, guys, is a massive part of Terraria building. You definitely need to play around with the blocks, the paints, and just the designs that you're going with. It's kind of a theme throughout all of the other tips, but don't be afraid to just try something and just stick with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. No build is. And you're going to find that it's really a good way for you to understand how that block or that wall actually interacts with other parts of your design. And it may actually even help you unlock some potential ideas for the future. But yeah, there you go, guys. There are all the tips that I've got for you, at least for now, when it comes to building. These are, again, meant for some of the beginners and maybe more intermediate builders, but these are some really good fundamental ways of looking at designs. And I really do hope that these help you understand how to really improve your builds when it comes to Terraria. Now, with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. And as always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. We will see you in the next one.